Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn and welcome back to Hearts Farm 4 as we are playing as the German Empire. Alright, so we're going to start out today's episode by kicking the Hungarians out of the faction uh, because we are going to uh, attack them. And, yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't have to do that, uh, but why not? I'm kicking from the faction. And I, I believe they're still set to go fascist as well so that's one thing to consider uh, but uh, you know they're currently getting that unaligned support and I don't know if they'll be able to go fascist or not it's really hard to say uh, but yeah we've kicked them from the faction so that we can declare war on them and change up their their borders here which uh, you know we'll see what we're gonna do there uh, probably you know I, I think we should probably attack them first we could try and do both at the same time. You know, we have the troop numbers and they're very easy conflicts here. Uh, but if we did that, it would take longer to get the war goals. And then we'll take a look and see if we want to click on this first here. Uh, if we want to, to do Estonia at the same time. I mean, it's going to add a few more days, but I think it's fine, guys. I was working on both at the same time. Uh, so over here in Estonia, this is going to be done in July. Uh, the end of July, and then for the Hungarians, this will be done in May. All right, so get all the troops moved over to their borders. Uh, since this is happening first, uh, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna split these tanks up. And having all these tanks over here would have exhausted the supply anyways. You can already see that that's happening here. Uh, so yeah, let's let's move some of these out over to here, and we'll likely just have them go after the capital and kind of just split the country in half. Here is what I'm thinking. Uh, so let's just take half of these guys. Uh, maybe even more than that, actually, because the Hungarians should have more troops than the Estonians do. And um, put them all over here. I'm going to go after the, the capital here. Alright, so that looks good. We'll start moving on over here. And this should help relieve the supply issues. Yeah, there we go. We're looking pretty good here now. Alright, excellent. Um, so now the question is, do we have enough troops? I mean, we have a, you know, a lot of troops over here. Yeah, I think this is probably fine. I don't think we need to make any adjustments or anything. All right, so those dockyards that were being used for repairs are done, and, and also it looks like we finished up that light cruiser as well. Uh, we are currently researching uh, the new cruisers, uh, but I don't think we're going to wait for that. We're just going to build one more uh, of these ones, and, and the reason why we only had them set to build that one and then to stop is because we do have some stuff that we can update here. A couple things, I believe. Uh, we, we haven't gotten the guns yet, obviously. That's the wrong one, anyway. Uh, we don't have the, the guns yet. But we do have the anti-air. Uh, I think, I mean, that's it for the sonar. We already have the highest level. What about radar? We do have radar. So we can get all those updated, though I did forget to change the letter here. So let's go and do that real quick. Uh, so yeah, all the anti-air needs to be upgraded. The radar needs to be upgraded. And again, we don't have the engines or anything like that. And uh, we can put the dual purpose on here. So that'll also boost it. We didn't get the depth charges yet. I think we're, we're good to go. I don't think there's anything else. We didn't get the torpedoes either. That's pretty good, and uh, apparently we don't have enough experience for this. All right, that's unfortunate. We need 12. We're at seven right now. Uh, so let's just go ahead and put these into, yeah, I'm not really happy with the convoy situation. So we'll put some of those into subs. Yeah, we'll just do it like that for now. Now one issue is that I don't think we have any of the Ship's currently training up at this moment. So let's go and put these guys over here with any other ship that didn't get trained. And then we'll let these guys train up. And since it's only them training, we'll just train them like so. And then we can set... Well, we don't want those guys training. I mean, I guess we'll probably have the uh, experience, but... Or excuse me, the, uh, the fuel. So we had plenty of fuel before. Uh, but yeah, we'll just use the submarines, I think, for for training purposes. Just get them all selected here, and then just let them train up. All right, so that looks pretty solid, guys. So we want to take these guys off uh, the patrol. No reason for them to do that anymore. Okay, so now we're just fast-forwarding to the wars against the Hungarians and Estonia. And so we're just kind of taking out these small countries right now. Uh, we have the, the Dutch as well, but I don't want to attack them until they've actually gone fascist. Because uh, while the, the fascists do have 51% uh, 
uh, control or support in the country uh, that is not resulted in them becoming fascists just yet. So that's the experience we needed to design those ships. Also, it looks like this factory situation is messed up. Uh, what we're, we're going to do here, though, is let's go ahead and release this. Well, we don't want to release until we're done with the War of the Hungarians. All right, so yeah, we'll wait to, to release that. Uh, but we do need to, to pull back on the factories somewhere. Uh, how are we doing on support equipment? We should have a nice stack at this point. Yeah, we do. Uh, so we're going to actually pull back on that. How about artillery? That's also something that should be really stacked at this point. Uh, we can pull back on that as well. Just try and get these to go down to the planes. And then uh, we need at least one factory in the trains. All right, excellent. So is there anything... Oh, we're good to go. Let's say, is there anything we need to build here? Man, we do not have uh, much civilian factories either. I'm, I'm wondering how, where we lost all the territory. Oh, and I did forget to, to give this up as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, so what we're wanting to do here is just give this over to Belarus. Uh, so let's go into our occupying territory and grant that over to them. Return their territory. There we go. All right, so we regranted that to them. And, you know, we lost uh, whatever we had access here. It was probably not much of anything. Uh, but we, we don't have the garrison there now, so that'll result in less equipment being needed for the, the garrisons. We got a full army of 24 divisions here on the Hungarian border. And I think that should be plenty since we're only attacking from our own territory. Uh, we did get the 1940 cruiser holes. Excellent. Let's go ahead and get... I guess we'll do the armor next. Yeah, that makes sense. So that means we probably want to get the this design out there. Yeah, we'll just build one of them. Oh, but there's so many changes that need to be made. But we just won't have the experience for all this. So I think it's probably better to just use the 12 experience to finish these guys up and build one more of this class. Since that's what the original plan was anyway. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. And then, yeah, just use the 12 experience guys to get one more of these older light cruisers uh, though we can also change the engine up and I think we'll have enough for that so yeah we can at least get the engine on there so that's nice and I want to say that's it yeah because we don't have the, the guns yet so that's it it's just radar anti-air and the engine that we're changing up here for 15 total experience and then again we're just gonna build one more of these that is all and we'll want them to deploy right here, and we want the full dockyards going into them as well. Um, so let's go ahead and pull back like so. So basically when this battleship here finishes up here in just three days, uh, then those five dockyards, four will go into submarines, and one will go into the convoys there. All right, excellent. So yeah, we'll get that done here in a couple days. We'll go ahead and make sure we get them training up as well. United States and Canada have formalized an alliance, so... Uh, that means that they have created their own alliance, the North American alliance. Um, so the British no longer have to leave the Allies now, even though I think they're still going to do that. Uh, technically, they don't, they don't have to. Uh, one advantage of waiting is that you don't have to fight you know, the four countries that are in here. Though it does appear that those are all socialist countries at this point. Yeah, maybe all the democracies have left. So at this point, you have the Philippines, obviously they're, they're subject in there, and Canada in the North American alliance. So the United States is in their own separate faction, and um, I assume they'll eventually attack the fascists. So we'll be back at war with uh, Mexico, Venezuela, and Peru. And I guess there's the Dominican Republic as well. Uh, we'll be back at war with them when we attack here, though I don't know if they even got pulled into the conflict last time, I don't recall. We did get the German war economy. So that switched us over to War Economy, got us a bunch of civilian factories freed up for us. And then, of course, we got all the military factories that were just constructed there and the dockyard just because we finished the construction of the battleship. No, I thought we had it set up so that they would all go to uh, other projects. Apparently not. All right, so we can go ahead and get the coal liquidization next, I think. I think that makes the most sense. Uh, this also will get us all those forts on the French border. So that'll be helpful. Uh, these are more dockyards, which we do need more dockyards. So we need to get that as well. And yeah, this will get us uh, the rubber back. I suppose we'll do the dockyards first. 
Yeah, I guess that makes the most sense. So we're going to get those uh, pride of the, the modern Germany. Uh, let's go ahead and get these dockyard designed. Again, I'm surprised that we had. Maybe he was repairing. Uh, I, I said he, like the dockyard has a gender. Uh, but yeah, maybe it was just being used for, for repairs. Uh, also, we've got those military factories we got from the, from the Focus. Uh, as far as experience, we might have enough to design the, the tank unit. So let's do that first. Um, but before we do that, let's get this battleship training up before I forget. Uh, so we're gonna put them in there with these guys, let them train up. And then same thing with the submarines here. Though this is level three, so we're actually gonna create a separate task force here uh, and give them a separate icon. They will be sharks. And we'll get them training as well. All right, so that looking, looking pretty solid here. Uh, that does result in us having one extra task force, unfortunately. So let's just go ahead and take one of these ones and just throw them in here. So it's not a problem anymore. So let's go ahead and design that heavy tank unit, which we will need a name for. Uh, we'll probably just want to duplicate these guys. That means that we can actually save a lot on the support. Uh, is this the one that's closest to what we want here? Uh, obviously we could probably change up that recon. We're gonna want engineers, probably support artillery. You know what we did not design yet was those medium self-propelled tanks yet. So maybe we'll do that first. Yeah, let's do that first. Uh, or I said medium, I meant heavies, of course. So I think what we're gonna wanna do is probably just take this one and save it as a new. I mean, obviously there's gonna be a lot of adjustments to be made, but some of this is gonna to you know stay the same. So we'll stay this, uh, keep this as the uh, same model for now. And then we're just gonna name it, because uh, you know I don't have a name from, for you guys yet. Uh, so right now, we're just gonna call it maybe heavy SP art or something. <laughs> yeah, obviously this is not the permanent name here. And then we'll get the the close support guns, which you know, because I think that's all we have here. Yeah, there's nothing else. Oh well, there's the howitzer. You don't have anything here for heavy, but yeah, we could do the the medium howitzer. That's artillery, so that'll work. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do the uh, the medium howitzers there. Um, here we're gonna want to do a heavy turret. Uh, we could even do a, a heavy fixed structure, technically. You know, it greatly reduces your breakthrough, but that's not what you use artillery for. But by doing that, you get a lot more reliability to play around with, and it reduces production costs. Again, breakthrough is important. Um, you know, you don't want to, I mean, it is reducing it a lot. And, and it's going to affect the whole unit. So, yeah, maybe that's not the, the best way to do it. And, and of course, the main purpose, uh, of course, of using the the fixed superstructure so that you can uh, have a bigger gun on it without having to have a bigger uh, tank. So I think we're just going to go with the three-man turret then. I mean, we could reduce the, the cost a little bit by going two-man turret. Yeah, I guess we'll do that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, again, it'll affect the breakthrough a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. And it's a bummer we just had that one level one medium howitzer there. Uh, we've already done this here. Uh, as far as other things that might be changed up down here, uh, suspension for the reliability probably is what we're going to want to keep that on. Yeah, we're probably going to keep that on there. Cast armor as well, because, you know, we don't want to reduce the armor of the unit too much uh, by changing this up. Yeah, I think we'll probably keep this as is, guys. It does increase production costs significantly, though. So you could reduce it by quite a bit if you want the welded armor. Yeah, I suppose we'll do that. Again, this is just supposed to be artillery here. Uh, so reducing the cost, I think, would be helpful, especially because we haven't had as much time to, to build it up. Uh, as far as these here, I mean, kind of, you, you don't want to reduce the armor too much because it affects the whole unit. So you're kind of limited a little bit on what all we want to do here. Yeah, there's not as much we can do. Uh, though I would like to get the soft attack up because like this is what this unit is supposed to do here uh, so maybe get rid of one of these like the armor skirts or something could also add a secondary turret on there for even extra breakthrough like a small cannon on here 
you know, it affects the armor and all that kind of stuff, but uh, might be worth it in this case. Because again, we're just trying to get something with a, a very high soft attack. So I think we will put that on there. Um, we can't do that because reliability is an issue. Though we can actually reduce uh, these a little bit. I think we can take down the engine by like maybe one. But that's not going to help the reliability that much. But yeah, I'd like to take this off and instead put the uh, additional machine guns for more soft attack. But yeah, it just reduces reliability too much. What if we changed up this and just put the additional machine guns on? Maybe that's a better way to go. And then you could then add uh, additional machine guns here as well. And you're, you're pretty low reliability, but I think that's probably fine. And then you can tick the engine down as well. So what are we uh, exactly getting out of this model here? We're trying to get soft attack. Uh, but let's see what all we lost. Obviously reliability is lower and the max speed is lower. Uh, soft attack, which is the purpose of this, has gone up by 14. So that's pretty important. You know, obviously you're losing all that heart attack for that. Um, but one thing I did not do is make them an artillery class here. So that's going to change things as well. Uh, so let's relook at it now that we've uh, set them to artillery. Uh, so that'll give them more soft attack. So they're at 19.8 now. Uh, you know, that's how much it's increasing by for a total of 44.8. Uh, obviously, heart attack's very low. Piercing's very low. Uh, hardness has gone down a little bit. Uh, armor is at 11.3 uh, lower, so not going to affect the unit too much. A lot of breakthrough lost here, obviously. And then the defense is slightly higher. They're going to use less fuel, but not by much. Yeah, I think this is good. Again, the purpose here is to increase the soft attack of the unit, and I think this uh, does that. In addition, uh, production costs is significantly lower, uh, so that's pretty big too. So yeah, I think this will work, guys. Yeah, this will work. Let's go and save it. And we need a name for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring it up here and put it underneath the heavy tanks. Uh, we don't need quite as many of them, uh, so maybe five factories into that. I don't know if that'll be enough or not. Uh, I guess we'll find out here in minutes uh, because we still have experience left so we can actually attempt to design this. Uh, so for the template that we want to make use of, uh, again I kind of think the light tanks would probably be the best template. Yeah, we'll just use the light tanks guys. Um, so let's go and duplicate this. Uh, we need a name for these as well. So basically we need a name for the heavy tank unit as well as the uh, self-propelled, the heavy self-propelled. So let's go ahead and get as much change up as we can. Uh, I suppose we can go and update this real quick. And uh, we're wanting to put heavy tanks in there, which again, this is going to be super cheap because of that spirit we have. And so mechanized heavy tanks, those are all free. I don't know if the self-propelled will be free. No, it won't. So we do have to to pay for that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Um, so we do have to pay for those. And I think we should put one more on there as well. And then we'll need to, to reduce this some, obviously. Uh, these all need to be changed over to mechanized, but uh, this is also free. So making another unit would not have been that expensive. Really what we're saving here is the support ones, any ones that we keep, which I don't think we'll keep all those, but uh, that's that's pretty much what we're saving on cost by doing it this way. Um, so where are we on organization? 31.4, and uh, we have to reduce it some. Frankly, we might not even be able to sit at exactly 30 with these guys here like this. So we might need to, to go ahead and remove one of those and then take off a, a mechanized here. That looks pretty good, organization's where I want it. Uh, so now we just need to look at this here, uh, see what we might want to, to change here. Probably over to the Armored Recon Company is what I'm thinking. Yeah, uh, we'll go over to the Armored Recon Company. And then we need maintenance companies. We have to get maintenance companies in here. So what do we replace? Like I wanna keep field hospitals, engineer companies, recon, and logistics. So it's, the only choice is really artillery. 
Uh, so we'll have to change that out to the maintenance companies. All right, so that'll work. And if we're just comparing to the light tanks, so this is their current speed here, which unfortunately is a little lower than I was hoping for. I'm not entirely sure what reduced that and why their speed's at 7.6 instead of eight. Did we not get the tanks? I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to take a look. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure why they're they're not higher. Uh, not all the, way, all the way up to eight. It's not that big of a difference though, of course. Uh, HP obviously gonna go up. Organizations a bit lower here. Uh, recovery rate slightly higher. I mean, many of these aren't that big of a difference here. Uh, what else is important? I have a reliability bonus here. Uh, so this is the, the combat stats. This is where we're going to see the increases. So with the soft attack, it's going up by 28. A big part of that, of course, is that heavy self-propelled artillery. Heart attack is where you're going to get uh, the biggest bonus, uh, you know, because you got those heavy tanks on there. So huge jump with the heart attack. Uh, defense is going up. Breakthrough is going up significantly due to those heavy tanks. Uh, armor, obviously, way higher than the light tanks. Uh, piercing, much higher as well. And, of course, we get that bonus from having the uh, maintenance companies in there. Uh, so we're going to require less manpower. Of course, it will have more fuel usage, as you'd expect. And as far as the equipment changes here, you can get more infantry equipment back, trucks, obviously a lot less light tanks. But yeah, yeah, that's the equipment you'll need more of. All right, so let's go and save this. That's our heavy tank model. Very good breakthrough. Fantastic breakthrough. As far as training, we'll, we'll get one training, see how we're looking on equipment. Uh, yeah, obviously we're incredibly short on heavy tanks and, and mechanized, so probably going to be all that we're going to get for right now. Uh, yeah, we'll just wait. Because, yeah, it's it's you know it's going to take time to be able to get those built up and get all the stuff for them. All right, so as far as the equipment that we need, so 102 heavy tanks, 80 heavy self propelled artillery. That's where we're sitting. Okay. And the reason why we need uh, you know so many... Uh, you know, self-propelled is just because we haven't built any yet. While we had been building the heavy tanks for a little while with the 15 factories, though efficiency is still pretty low here. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, I suppose what we'll do is step up the production for the self-propelled just a little bit and just see if there's anything that we can we can pull from. We need a lot of mechanized as well. I didn't see how many they, they said we needed for that, though. Uh, but yeah, let's go and step that up. Did we like have enough? It looks like we had enough uh, for that unit. Okay, so we had been, been building that for a little while as well. Uh, we've got these light tanks done here. Uh, we can go ahead and put those into these armies, I suppose. Uh, we'll put one into here. We'll just put them, you know, spread them out here. And then take one and put them over here as well. All right, excellent. So get some more units going over there. Uh, so when, when do we get the Hungarian one? in May. All right, so I'm hoping we'll be able to get both of these conflicts done in this episode. The Hungarian one should be fairly quick. Uh, I, I don't know if they'll join a faction. I guess we'll have to wait and see. And they could join that fascist faction. They'll definitely join uh, if we're still at war with them uh, by the time we attack Estonia, but there's quite a few days in between those wars, so we might already have them defeated at that point. Now, I did not move any planes down here. Uh, we have the planes here. I don't know if we have enough. I, I feel like we probably got plenty. I mean, I guess I didn't send as many as I thought. Sent 600. Um, you know, 400 close air support and 200 fighters. And, and that's probably enough. But we'll just go ahead and bring a, a few more over here, guys. Why not? We'll bring a, a fighter wing over here. And then let me see how many we're going to want down here. Let's do these ones down here. And I'll put another fighter over here. So let's try and find some more close air support here, because clearly that's what we need a bit more of. Yeah, it looks like a lot of our close air support's over here. Let's move these guys over here, and uh, one more air wing over here. And then we have the tactical bombers, which they don't even need to move. They can just bomb from here. All right, excellent. So we'll have all the the planes out there. I'm not going to bother putting the ships, I don't think. I mean, I suppose you could put the submarines out there to sink any convoys that are coming through here. Uh, we got the improved artillery upgrade. Excellent. Uh, so we're going to start working on the, the 1941s. There's the improved heavy cannon, so that's big. Improved medium howitzer, that's super helpful too. 
So yeah, I feel like we should probably go ahead and start working on these. Yeah, let's go ahead and make that happen, guys. We will start with the... Let's get the anti-air first. Yeah, I think that's more useful to get. I'm going to make sure we're just building one of these. Yep, good to go on that front. All right, excellent. Uh, now, did we get anything we have to upgrade with that? I didn't actually look. Let me just take a look real quick. See if there's anything here. All right, so that's just the 10% the soft attack. All right, excellent. So just a nice little passive bonus there. Uh, we've got all these troops done training here. So we could put them onto a front. There's not really anywhere to put them. Because, yeah, this is a matter of... Uh, well, we don't just don't need any more troops over here. And it's a matter of uh, supply, potential supply issues. I can send three over here and see if they exhaust the supply. Uh, we could also fix the supply situation, too. If they do exhaust it. And we can make them use trucks. That will be helpful. Yeah, we'll see if that stretches the supply out. It looks good. I think the reason why we were having supply over there when we first looked at it is because we didn't have control of all the rails over here just yet. Uh, we did get that radar. All right, awesome. And uh, we'll need to put those on the tanks as well. Uh, and I suppose we can just continue down here getting the radar. Uh, so let me uh, get these tanks changed up here. So we want to put... The new radios over here. That's going to improve their stats. It's only going to be one experience, though I did forget to change the name here. Um, though, I like that they actually got a name here when I made that adjustment, didn't I? Or didn't they? Storm Tiger? Storm Tiger A? Yeah, I mean, that works. Uh, we can also change up the icons here. Go with the... I mean, that doesn't really look like that, but <laughs> I don't think we're going to find anything uh, that looks closer here. I'm going to kind of scroll through here and, and double check. But yeah, I'm not seeing anything. And then with the model here. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get any more close. I mean, this kind of looks a little bit closer, I suppose. But yeah, it, it doesn't really matter, honestly. All right, so let's go and save that. I just changed up the, uh, the radio there. And um, we'll change up the line. It's a Storm Tiger A. We could keep that name. Uh, if you guys like it, we'll go ahead and get the uh, level 3 radios on this one as well. And save that. And make sure there's nothing else to change here. Did we get the... I think we're still working on getting that. Improved heavy cannons. Alright, so we're good to go there. Uh, so let's just go ahead and change up this line here. Alright, excellent. So we're short on a little bit on, on some of this equipment here. But for one or two uh, resources, I'll just take the efficiency penalty. It's fine. Yeah, it's not too big of a deal. It allows us to build more military factories. Um, so with the radar, we got two new levels, so we should improve all these areas here that we've already built radar in. And just get them bumped up a little bit. So we'll go here. I guess we can go there. That's not really entirely necessary, I suppose. And we'll build this one up as well. So yeah, we'll build up all the, the radar a bit. Let's go continuing to declare war on other countries, which resulted in what I expected to have happen here. The Americans are now actually supporting the other uh, American countries, and that is now going to result in uh, the Mexicans being completely wiped out, and uh, maybe Venezuela and Peru as well, though what's probably going to happen is the same situation that happened with that war with Poland as Mexico I believe is the leader of the faction now right let me just double check yeah they're the faction leader so this is actually a good thing because one thing I didn't think about is if they pulled in Mexico uh, you know when we attacked Estonia we would not be able to win that war without defeating Mexico uh, because they're the faction leader so we were not in a state to, to be ready to invade them yet uh, they didn't have anywhere to invade from so that was going to be a problem I think uh, that America has now solved for us uh, which I didn't even think about now given we're not attacking them until the summer but yeah it would have been a problem guys uh, looks like there's some supply issues here I don't think it's a big enough deal to, to do anything to fix it though um, yeah I'm not gonna fix it I think it's fine guys we'll leave it as is all right so yeah just wait until May uh, less less than two months now at this point and uh, 
we'll invade the Hungarians and see if we can't get the war done before we declare war on Estonia. Just so we can, you know, micromanage the, the fronts easily, not have to bounce back and forth between them. The Hungarians are looking really weak. And what we'll probably do is, like, not... Well, if we don't pull in Italy, can't give them any territory. Uh, the British have now formed their own faction. So, are there no allies anymore? Let's, let's take a look at the faction map and see what happened there. Uh, because I imagine they remained, but maybe not. Alright, so there's that South American coalition, which probably doesn't have any South American countries in it. Nope, that's just Belgium. Uh, so they're in their own faction. Of course, you got the North American Alliance here. Got that fascist faction. It looks like the allies are gone. Okay, so no more allies, guys. Okay, so the British are now in their own faction, or do they have... Yeah, they're in their own faction. Those, those countries that were already in it uh, have left it. Or, you know, they didn't leave it. The allies were destroyed. And so maybe they'll join this British faction? Hard to say. Uh, but yeah, I assume the French will, will join as well. So it'll be a French-British Communist Alliance. As we anticipated. I got some rain going right now. Yeah, it's raining at the moment. Uh, and you know what? We probably should train up some some more planes. I haven't done that in a little while here. So let's go ahead and pull some out of the stockpile and get them training. So yeah, we'll get these guys first. And then duplicate them. And then we'll get some, some fighters out there. And then duplicate those as well. And then the naval bombers. We can go ahead and put a, another air wing of those out here and get them training. In fact, we're going to increase them up to 200. They'll uh, slowly replace that number there, or, or get that built up. All right, so we've got the improved infantry equipment too. So the next thing we want to get is the naval bombers. We researched, or, or excuse me, got the, uh, the focus for that last episode, I believe, and I never actually got it researched. Uh, so what is this about? So with the Western Belarus now firmly under central powers control, the dictator of Auslan has announced interest in establishing the occupation zone of Auslan under Auslander administration. The rationale behind such a proposal would be to promote fascist ideology across the Baltics and Belarus and advance central powers interest in the East. I'm not entirely sure what they're asking for here. Oh, okay, well, they already created it. So this is the Ausland here. So, I mean, it's basically just a unification of Latvia and uh, Lithuania. That's what it looks like. I'm fine with that. Yeah, and I, I wonder if they'll allow you to add Estonia to that. Like, will they get cores on this? I mean, you can always add it to them obviously in the peace treaty but uh, will they have cores there? I think that's the question here. Yeah I say inspired that's interesting. Oh, okay they wanted memel from us. Uh, okay so that's what happened. I was hovering over and it didn't tell us what what they wanted there. So we lost memel. That's unfortunate but uh, eh, I'm okay with it I suppose. I mean I'm not. Germans are not okay with losing memel here. Uh, but this is our, our subject country, so that's what they were asking for. See, I was, I was wondering if we were approving the the creation of Auslan, which, of course, didn't make any sense because they've already made it. Uh, but that's what they are asking for, Memo, but it didn't tell me that. There was nowhere in the event, uh, but I guess they wanted all their territory, so. Yeah, see, I was thinking it had something to do with Belarus here, since it said that. So, yeah, I, I didn't know what it was about. So I'm wondering if this is now court territory of theirs. It is. Okay, so yeah, we'll just grant all that to them. That's what I was hoping would happen there. Uh, we do have some spare military factories here. Let me just take a look, see what's what's shortest. I mean, obviously we know we need all this equipment here, so it should probably work on that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Let's kind of pump into to this here. Uh, mechanize the heavy tanks and the self-propelled. So we're doing pretty good on the, the mechanized. Uh, let's go up to 18 here for the, the heavy tanks. And up to 10 here for the self-propelled. Uh, we are short on multiple types of equipment here, so let's go ahead and fix that. Get the tungsten, the rubber, and the chromium. Seems like we can't get what we need from the Italians. That's been 
causing us problems here. Uh, so we'll have to go with the South Africans then. Is that enough? We'll be short four, so let's get one more. Whoops. There we go. And the Hungarians proclaim Greater Hungary. Okay, well. I mean, good for you. We'll, we'll see how long Greater Hungary lasts. <laughs> And uh, we got the, the cruiser armor as well. Uh, we already got them set to only build the, the one more cruiser. Uh, we need to get uh, all the stuff for them. So depth charges, I guess we'll get that first. But we need to get torpedoes as well. And their, their guns. Uh, so all those have to be, be gotten. Uh, and let me just see when this cruiser is going to be done. Uh, in July. Okay, so actually fairly soon. And I don't know if we'll wait for that equipment uh, to be researched. We'll see where we're at on there. Uh, that got us more dockyards and naval experience. All right, excellent. Um, so, what do we want to get next? Let me go down this route now. Yeah, I think that's what we'll get. Uh, prepare for the next blockade is also uh, helpful to have. It gives you some more stability and uh, more of our civilian factories back. You know, I really want the rubber from this. Rubber is obviously an issue. We're trading a lot of civilian factories away for the rubber. So I think it would be helpful to, to go ahead and grab that up. I almost want to get another line of battleships building. Do we have anything that we're researching that we'd put on that battleship? Probably the radar and the anti-air would be useful to wait for. So yeah, we, we'll wait to get that. And we'll just put this into submarines for now. Always use more subs. Especially uh, more modern subs. Alright, so we can go ahead and get these... Uh, tanks assigned. Uh, I guess we'll put them over here. We're still good on supply over there. Uh, probably don't want to put any more divisions there though. I think uh, that would probably stretch the line, uh, stretch their supply by too much. Alright, so let's go ahead and take out these guys that aren't trained yet and then we'll just bring them over here. Obviously don't need 22 divisions against the Dutch and where are all their troops? Yeah, they have like no troops over here. Uh, still Japan that wants to join. Uh, but they still got Russia attached to them, so not yet an option. Uh, so we'll have this war goal here against Hungarians here in about a week. And we'll be able to go, go ahead and launch the attack against them. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to get the Estonia war uh, in this episode, unfortunately. It'll just be the Hungarians. Alright, so there we go. We got that. And we're just going to declare war immediately. The question is, do we want to bring in our allies? What I was going to do is I was going to release Transylvania rather than give it to Romania, uh, just based on your guys' comments. I think there's like one person who said, let's give Transylvania back to Romania. Uh, everybody else wanted to do something else with it, and several people commented that we should just release them. So that's what we'll do. So we'll have like three separate countries here, uh, Hungary, Transylvania, and Romania. Because we could give some, some territory to the Italians uh, if we let them join, like you give them this one patch of territory here. Maybe that would look good. I don't know. Is it, I think it would look probably better if you had that under Transylvania, honestly. So I think that's what we're going to do. We'll just leave borders as is here for the Italians. So in that case, that means we don't even want them to join. Which means they'll be able to put all their troops up over here, but that's okay. It, it, it means we'll completely control the peace treaty. Uh, so we will not call our allies in for this Hungarian conflict. I'll pull them into the Estonian one because that's a, a larger conflict uh, with that faction, but yeah, I don't think we need to pull them into this one. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna send all the tanks over here, go after the capital, and we will do any attacks uh, where it's wide open, like here. we send both these guys over here. And I suppose we should keep one unit right there, since uh, our allies here will not be helping us. So again, we, we can do little attacks like this, where it's uh, going to be easy. Keep one of these guys here. Alright, so we already won there. Let's just slow this down a bit. This is going to be a, a, a fast conflict. That should not be difficult at all. Send these guys this way, these guys over this way. Let's go and advance here as well. Yeah, it should be a nice, easy conflict, guys. And let's go ahead and advance here and here. And we're going to go ahead and... You know, we can probably get behind them. I don't know if there's this lake here, though. Yeah, we'll just go and attack. So far, everything's going smooth, as you'd expect. Uh, and then we need to move these guys, though. 
Uh, so let's get two going over here and two going over this way. And then take one over here. Rest go over here. You know, guys, I'm not going to bother assigning these military factories since we're giving all this territory back and uh, I just don't want to have to assign them just to have to reassign all the equipment and stuff. Yeah, I just don't want to do it. So this guy's trying to leave. We gotta make sure he doesn't leave so we can cut him off. Uh, when do we get here? We'll be there before him. All right, excellent. Uh, let's go and grab this province over here. And this guy can go... Well, he'll come over here because these tanks will do better going this way. Uh, actually, let's go here and here. And let's just get rid of this front here. Uh, we can't really do that easily, though. Yeah, so we'll just have to leave it there for now. And let's take these guys and go over here. We'll go this way. And we're already grabbing that. Alright, excellent. Uh, we're going to push forward here. Now we one over here as well, so let's go and grab this territory. We'll go this way and this way. Get those units cut off. And this guy's now been cut off, so let's get him destroyed. And this guy's been cut off as well, so we'll get him wiped out. Alright, we'll have him move over to this front here and advance into that territory. And let's go across the river here. So we will attack, actually we'll attack this guy here and have him go here because that will result in that unit getting cut off as well. And we just take a look at how close they are to capitulation at this point. 71%. They've already lost uh, 40,000, almost 41,000. We lost 560 dudes. So uh, going pretty well so far. <laughs> suppose you could say that. Uh, so this guy, let's have him grab, actually you know what, let's actually go this way. And then he'll go across the river here. Uh, so these guys are going to attack here next, get them destroyed. And let's see where we want to go. We'll go here. And then bring these guys over to... I mean, he can probably win right there. I'll attack that way. And then let's send uh, another unit down here. Kind of help us out. Same thing with this guy here. Alright, so these guys now are cut off, so let's get them destroyed. Send these over here, and this guy can go this way. And he'll be attached to this. Alright, so we got the Concentrated Industry 4. Uh, let's go after... I guess we'll do the construction next, and then we'll get the excavation. We do need to extend this border out a bit over here. This front. So these guys stay... On it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to attack in the mountains. I think that's unnecessary. Considering the fact that we just about got these guys defeated anyways. Alright, so we're going to take all these and come over here now. And you know what? I really don't think that it's necessary to bring any further troops over here. I think we got this, guys. Yeah, I'm about to wipe out those units as well. Alright, excellent. All right, we're going to advance over here into this mountain province while it's undefended. We'll also take their new capital. Uh, let's go and attack over here as well. And looks like we need to bring this guy over here to help out. Let's keep these guys on this front. And we should probably extend the size of this front out. Like so. We'll advance over here. Again, just attacking where, wherever they're not defending. All right, so just about done with this here. So this is what we're going to do. Let's go and take that guy, since he's got his organization, he'll attack over there, help out, while he comes over here. Him coming over this way, since that's done, and uh, frankly it's just here now, so we'll just send everybody across this river, just to get it done. So I don't really want to wait. Uh, though this guy will go up. That's the quickest way to do this. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Alright, so it's going to grab all this territory here. I'm surprised they haven't yet capitulated. You'd think they would have at this point. Let me just take a look and see where we're at. So we're at 95%. They've already taken 182,000 casualties while we've taken 2.4 thousand. So, going pretty well. Uh, who else is in this war? 
Nobody, okay. I thought I saw somebody else in there. I was like, I could have swore I said, don't pull the allies in. Uh, we can go grab that real quick. Alright, so all these little pockets have been destroyed, and uh, now we're just waiting for them to capitulate. Alright, so that's it. We got all their equipment, and the war with the Hungarians is over. Uh, so, we just want to look at the casualties for the end here. 192,000 for only 2.4 thousand losses. It's not bad, guys. Not bad at all. Um, where to put all these troops now? Yeah, I'm not sure where we're going to put them just yet. We don't have a front with the Russians uh, because of Ukraine and Belarus. And also, they got a lot of fascist support. Hmm. I almost feel like... These are future enemies. Too much fascist support. Um, so what we might want to undo, oops, is like split these up and have them. I guess we could do it this way. Oh, these are all the mountain troops up here, isn't it? All right, so we'll leave some of these for the other army. There's not really any mountains in this area, so. So yeah, we'll go ahead and put them on this border. I actually didn't want them on Romania's border, though. We'll just use our... Well, I mean, I guess all this is... Yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay, yeah. All this is territory of, of our puppets, so it doesn't really matter how we do this, frankly. Um, so what we might want to do... Because this is such a wide border. I mean, I guess they're both long borders, but yeah, maybe just take one of these guys, bring them down to this one. Okay. So put them over here for now, uh, because yeah, I feel like there's just a little bit too much fascist support over here in these countries, and um, frankly, we kind of need a border with the Russians. Uh, so yeah, really, there wasn't, if we were going to do this, there wasn't any real reason to give this territory to Belarus, other than to make them a tougher enemy, I suppose. Alright, so we're just waiting for the uh, peace treaty to fire here. Should be any moment now. It's interesting that it takes a little while now. I wonder if they did that intentionally. Oh yes, the uh, the tanks. We don't want those all going up there. Yeah, that would not be good. That'd be too many, too many tanks. I think. Yeah, it's probably too many tanks. So let's just give them like a, a fallback line somewhere, like so, and we'll bring them over there. Uh, I suppose we can let like a couple. Tanks go up there, maybe get them up to 10, because I'm not seeing any supply issues just yet. Right. Let's take those guys and bring them up there, but the rest should go somewhere else. And there we go. There's our treaty that we're waiting on. Alright, so nobody else is involved, so we basically get to control this, but uh, we can't just straight puppet them. Uh, we have to first satellite Transylvania and then puppet them to get that to work the way we want. Alright, so no greater hungry anymore, but they might still be called that. Alright, so now we're puppeting them, and I did forget about that territory there. Um, we're going to want to give that back to Romania. I'm glad I saw that, but we'll have to annex it and then give it to to Romania. That's the only way this is going to work. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll annex it and then puppet the rest of the Hungarian territory. Now again, we could have given um, some of this to Italy, I suppose, or even all of it to Italy. Yeah, I think it looks better this way, though, with just the three different countries here. Remember, there's also going to be another country here. Uh, which we're, we're going to create now. We're ready to do that. So let's go ahead and do that, and then say we're done. And then we're going to do some managing of territory here. Um, so this one here we want to give up to Romania. So let's find Romania, and then we're going to return that little patch of territory to them. Uh, that, and that wasn't the only option. I, I suppose we could have gave that to, to Poland instead, because I believe Poland has uh, a core. Nope, Ukraine. That would have been the other option. So yeah, they were the only choice there. Uh, but that's who I was going to give it to anyways. And then we're also going to release this territory here, but not as Czechoslovakia. We don't want to give all that up. Oh, that wouldn't be the best way to do it. It would look strange if we did it that way. Um, so yeah, we don't want to do it that way. I was hoping for... Oh, there is no... Yeah, that's a real bummer. And, and I hate how they don't let you really control how you release territory. Like, you, you can only just release it all. You can't just release some of it. Alright, well, I'm not sure how to do that, then. Can you give, um... No, you give that to the Hungarians. It looks like it's only this one state, though. The southern Slovakia. 
which actually makes it look weirder. Hmm. That's a shame. Yeah, I wish there was uh, a Slovakia here we could release. But that's not really an option. And um, man, there's not anything else to do here. Okay, so let me know what you guys want to do um, with this. Like, we could give this to the Hungarians or whatever, but yeah, I kind of want to give all this up. We'd have to use the console, though, so are you guys okay with, with using the console to give this to somebody else, anybody else, really? Uh, I don't really care who we give it to. Uh, I suppose what we'd want to do, we could just create a Czechoslovakia just in this area. What we'd have to do is we'd give them this, and then we'd take back uh, the territory up here using the, uh, the console and just have Czechoslovakia here since we can't create a Slovakia. So that would be an option. The other option would be to give all this to the Hungarians. Uh, to give basically from here on east to the Hungarians. So that would be the other choice I could see doing. So let me know what you guys want to do here. We could just leave it as is. I think it looks kind of strange, but uh, like we're eating Poland here. But I suppose we could leave that uh, as is if you guys want. So let me know what you guys want to do with that little patch of territory uh, down in the comments below. Uh, unfortunately, I think that is going to have to be the end of today's episode. Uh, I suppose we can let these troops move around and everything real quick and get to the point where we're almost ready to declare war on Estonia, which again, this will be in July. So we can get to that point. We're getting the army experience, uh, or excuse me, all the experience up here uh, built up. Yeah, we got the 67 experience, which... I want to say we had one more thing to get. Yeah, I didn't get this yet. Uh, so let's go and get uh, the last of the spirits, which is going to be maneuver warfare. Uh, that's going to increase our division speed and our coordination. The other choice would be flexible organization. This also gives a 5% bonus for speed, and then you get an organization loss when moving instead. Yeah, I think we're going to use this one here for the coordination. Also, of course, it affects the, the tactics, the preferred tactics. Uh, so that's another thing to, to consider there. So we'll go ahead and grab that up with our experience. It looks like we got this done here as well. And uh, you see the Russians are still a uh, Japanese puppet. And do we just want to continue getting these? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll get the, the medium howitzer next. Uh, we also don't need to do these parades. So we are stacked on, on the political power, so I guess we could do the parades. Uh, is there anything over here to, to change up that we might want to? I suppose we could cha change up this if we wanted to, but... Yeah, I like getting the, the bonuses, and we can't go to closed economy anyways. Uh, you get more bonuses, I guess, but then you'll have the less resources. Like, is there anything here that maybe we just got temporarily? I don't think so. I think it's just in the spirits that we have some research bonuses. And I'm noticing that despite not being at war here, we are not seeing any penalties. So I wonder if that's only for democracies. I thought it was not aligned that got the penalties, but... Uh, yeah, maybe it's just democracies that get it. So we could have went to, to War Economy a long time ago then and uh, got access to all those factories. So good to know for the future. Non-aligned can or unaligned, whatever you want to call it. it it's difficult to say because it's like the party ideology here says non-aligned, but then it'll say unaligned elsewhere. So I don't know if it's unaligned or not aligned. <laughs> means the same thing, essentially, though. Uh, we did get uh, something done here. Uh, the light cruisers. That's right. Um, so we wanted to design those next ones. We have the experience to do so as well. Um, so we should probably go ahead and get those designed. But that's going to have to be next episode, I, I think. Yeah, we'll have to do it next episode. Uh, we can go and put these guys in their task force, though. Yeah, put them in there. And then uh, get this light cruiser pulled out as well. Now, I didn't add uh, Admiral during that war. Uh, to this fleet here. You know, we had one for the subs. We didn't have one for them. Uh, I got Marshall in charge here. Uh, so he has the bold, which increases the naval speed and the damage. That's why I went with them. He's also uh, level four here. Uh, so, you know, we, we only had the one level three, but uh, he's got the superior tactician. So you could have went for him as well. Uh, of course, there's the, the Raider, Admiral, Eric Raider, but um, that actually reduces naval AA attack. In exchange for capital ship attack, I feel like that's not a good uh, bonus to have there. And then he also has this one, which will re reduce your retreat decision chance. 
So I don't think he's the best choice for us, guys. So that's the reason why uh, I have Marshall in charge instead. Uh, and he has those nice bonuses, the uh, damage bonus. Uh, so we'll get the light cruisers designed uh, next episode. Uh, we do have the experience, I think, to fully design those. And that's going to be the, the new... Uh, 1940 light cruisers that we have here, so we gotta fully design them. I think we should be good to go. Uh, experience wise, shouldn't be more than 97 naval experience, you would think. So we will get them uh, designed in the beginning of the next episode. Leave this dockyard uh, notification up here, so I know. And um, we never use the cipher against Poland either. My bad, guys. We should have used that. We could have saved like 100 lives, and we didn't really lose that many dudes. Uh, so we wouldn't have saved a lot of people, but yeah, it would have made it even faster than it already was. I forgot we had the cipher for them. Uh, but yeah, should have used that. Uh, but I guess we got the, the passive bonuses from it, but but yeah, we really should have used it. There's no reason to keep it, especially when you plan on, on subjugating them. So yeah, we should have used that. Alright, so we got all of our ships training up. That's where we're getting all the experience from. Uh, we have these planes training up as well over here. Uh, yeah, just make sure yeah, we're good to go here. And we might even have some more. Man, we got more in the stockpile. We can create some new new air wings. So I'll do that before the next episode as well. Uh, so the next conflict, we could declare war on the Dutch once they go fascist, which they have. So we could declare war on them. Uh, but yeah, next conflict is going to be Estonia. Maybe we'll do that this one here at the same time. Let me just see. Do we want to do that? Yeah, why not? Let's just go ahead and justify the war goal over here as well. Uh, though we do get a war goal in here against them somewhere. I think that's kind of far down. Uh, th this only gives you the one against Belgium and Luxembourg. So yeah, that wouldn't give it to us. So in that case, there's really no reason to not just go ahead and form the war goal now then. And, and it's not like I need to conserve political power anyways, because we are stacked on it. Uh, so it's going to be 185 days, 37 political power. And we'll declare we're on the Dutch as soon as we get that, so that would result in it being merged into this conflict uh, if we were still in that war, which I assume will be in it as long as Mexico is still around. Uh, but you see that they're getting defeated here, being pushed back, uh, as, as you'd expect. The Mexicans don't have much of a chance against the Americans. Uh, I don't even know if they'll still be around by the time we get into this war against Estonia. It's hard to say here. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens there, guys. Uh, have they invaded Venezuela at all? I'm not seeing any invasions up along here just yet. But yeah, I assume the Americans will eventually invade into South America. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the big countries that we have left, because we haven't actually fought any major countries yet. Uh, but yeah, we still have Russia, France, and uh, Britain, which again, I assume we'll fight Britain when we fight the French. So yeah, we still have the three major countries to fight. These are all just been small wars uh, so far. But even so, look at what we built with the Central Powers just with these these small wars. We're looking pretty powerful already. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next one. And thanks for watching.